Hello everyone, welcome to Learning Station. In this segment, we're going to see the summary of the poem The Spider and the Flay in English. It was written by Mary Botham Howitt. She was an English poet. She was born in Gloucestershire. She was educated at home. She reads a lot. Mary Botham and her husband William Howitt together, they wrote more than 180 books. This poem, The Spider and the Fly, is a conversation between a spider and a fly and also about how the cunning spider makes the fly to fall into the spider's web with its flattering words. Let me read the lines. Will you walk into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. This is the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair and I have many curious things to show when you are there. Initially, the spider invites the fly into its parlor, which means the spider's web. That spider started to attract the fly towards the parlor by saying that the fly would not have seen a beautiful parlor like this. The way of the parlor is made up of winding stairs. Once you reach the parlor, a lot of interesting things were there to show you. Oh no no, said the little fly, to ask me is in vain, for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again. Then the fly replied to the spider, No, no, there is no use of asking me about it because whoever goes up to your winding stair cannot return back or come down again. I am sure you must be weary, dear, with soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed? said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around, the sheets are fine and thin, and if you like to rest a while, I will snugly take you in. Then the spider started to speak lovely words. The spider says that I know you must be weary. You could have flayed in hate. It asks the fly to rest for a while in its bed. There are pretty curtains were drawn around. The bed sheet will also be thin and nice. If you need to take rest, come with me. Let me take you carefully inside. Oh no, no, said the little fly, for I have often heard it said, they never, never wake again who sleep upon your bed. Then the fly answered, No, no, I have often heard about it that whoever sleep in your bed will not return back again. Said the cunning spider to the fly, Dear friend, what can I do to prove the warm affection I have always felt for you? I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I am sure you are very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? When the fly doesn't come into its line, again it started to soothe with its cunning words. The spider called the fly as dear friend and told, What will I do now? How will I show you the love which I have for you? How will I prove my affection for you? I have lot of nice things in my pantry. If you come, you are always welcome. If you want to take something from there, you can take. The spider tries to make the fly to fall into its flattery. Oh, no, no, said the little fly, kind sir, that cannot be. I have heard what is in your pantry and I do not wish to see. Then the fly replied, no, no, please sir, I can't come. I have heard about your pantry and what is in it. I don't want to see that. Sweet creature, said the spider, you are witty and you are wise. How handsome are your gauzy wings? How brilliant are your eyes? I have a little looking glass upon my parlor shelf. If you will step in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. Then the spider called the fly a sweet creature and told that you are witty and wise, your wings are very beautiful, your eyes are also brilliant, there is a little looking glass upon my parlor shelf. If you step inside one moment, you could also take it. I thank you, gentle sir, she said, for what you are pleased to say. And bidding you good morning now, I will call another day. The fly said, I thank you, gentle sir, for what you have said. I am leaving now. I will call you another day. The spider turned him round about and went into his den. For well he knew the silly fly would soon come back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. The spider returned back and went into its den. It knows very well that the silly fly will come back again. So it started to wave a subtle web in a corner. It also made the table ready to dine upon the fly. Then he came out to his door again and merrily did sing. Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with a pearl and silver wing. Your robes are green and purple. There is a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like the diamond bright, but mine are dull as lead. 
Again the spider came near the door and started to sing happily by singing Come hither come hither pretty fly with a pearl and silver wing your dress is green and purple there is a crest upon your head your eyes are like diamond but the spider's eyes are dull as lead he started singing like that alas alas how very soon the silly little fly hearing his willy flattering words came slowly flitting by with buzzing wings she hung aloft then near and nearer drew thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue thinking only of her crested head poor foolish thing by hearing all these flattering words the silly the silly fly slowly came near to the spider that fly was thinking of the flattering words of the spider as brilliant eyes green and purple robes and the crested head this poor foolish fly came near the spider with its buzzing wings at last up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast he dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den within his little parlor but she never came out again finally the cunning spider jumped on the fly and dragged the fly towards the winding stair in its small parlor inside a very bad den but the fly didn't come back again and now dear little children who made this story read to idle silly flattering words i pray you never give heed unto an evil counselor close heart and ear and eye and take a lesson from this tale of the spider and the fly in the last paragraph the moral of the poem is described the author is instructing to the children who were all listening to this poem don't pay any heed to idle and silly flattering words even the evil counselors will seem or act as if they are good no heed should be paid to them that is the moral of the poem the fly which paid heed to the flattering words of the spider has lost its own life we learn from this poem that we should not believe the people who use flattering words that's all about this poem the spider and the fly stay tuned with learning station for further videos